In this video, I want to show you how to take apart and put back together the travel tripod ball head. All right, great. So the first step is to uh, lift up the center column. I'm going to unscrew this screw, raise it a little bit, and then lock it again. Um, next step is to <clears throat> expose the screw at the very top. So what I want to do is be able to see that screw. Um, we call it the ball screw. So I'm going to grab this included hex wrench or any four millimeter hex wrench and uh, put it um, inside the uh, ball screw and then unscrew it. Um, that allows me to have the uh, travel tripod ball head separate from the rest of the unit. So the first step is to take the included hex wrench and find the 2.5 millimeter side. That's the small side. And then you can use that to unscrew the six screws that are around the um, perimeter of the bottom of the ball head. I'm gonna actually use an automated device to make this video a little faster. You may consider this to be cheating. Um, I should call it efficient, Victor. Okay, so once I've done that step, there are now three long screws and three short screws. Um, I can shake this and, uh, and view and confirm, in fact, that I have all the screws. Um, so you can see there are three small screws and three short screws. Short screws there, long screws there. Um, you can also see that this um, bottom assembly is made up of three parts, actually. Um, one part we call uh, the ball assembly. The other part is the ball head chassis, that's this die cast part. And then there's actually a plastic bushing that's on the inside here. So for now, I'm not gonna disassemble these three components. They come kind of as a preset assembly. I'm gonna go, go ahead and talk about um, the rest of these components and make sure that, um, that you guys can see each part that's actually in this. So I'm gonna take off the outer ring um, and you can see that there's actually two parts in here. There's a bushing as well as an outer ring. So I'm gonna leave these together as well. Um, but you wanna make sure that you can see that there's a bushing in addition to a um, aluminum ring. Now I'm gonna to move to the gears. So there are three idler gears and three idler gear pins. The pins are metal and the gears are um, a glass film nylon. I'm gonna take them out individually and keep the pins on the table and then move on to this next part. The next part is called the cinch chassis. I'm gonna pop that off, show it there. Then I'm gonna pull off, this is the cinch ring. Um, put that there. <clears throat> and one thing to notice here is <clears throat> there's a tiny pin here. This is a brass pin and a tiny spring. So these components might um, eject from this assembly and uh, wander. So you want to make sure that you have found these and you know where they are. Last couple steps are to remove <clears throat> an assembly called the ball head clamp gear. Um, and this assembly actually has several components on the inside. So I'm going to take apart um, all the components and show you what they are and where they go. First of all, um, starting bottom to top, there's a brass co-molded gear. Um, that's one part. There's a wave spring. That's another part. And then there's a stack. And the way the stack goes is there's a plastic bushing. There's a metal washer. There's a thrust bearing. And then there's a another metal washer. I want to give some additional clarity on these sub-assemblies. Um, I'm going to look at these little gears. So these pins, the metal pins inside the gears can actually be removed. So that's one, this is two, this is three. Um, so for clarity, these parts can come apart from these metal pins. Um, you should have three and three when you rebuild the, the ball head and um, they can be matched with any of, the, any, of the, any of those pairs. Moving to the ball head ring, um, I mentioned there's a bushing, a plastic bushing on the inside here. I wanna show you how to take that out. Um, for the next three steps here, I'm going to be using what's known as a pick. So this is a metal shaft that has a fine point to it. So I'm not going to try to stab anything with this point, but I'm going to use it um, as a very uh, high dexterity tool to get underneath this bushing. 
So using the tool is easy to pop out the bushing. Um, it has some lubricant on it. And I just want to make sure that you saw that these are two completely different parts. When you zoom in on this ring, um, there's more clearance on one side than there is on the other. So this ring goes on the side that has more clearance. So a deeper groove for the ring um, right there. And when you assemble the ring, there should still be a shoulder visible. So I'm going to assemble it in the wrong orientation and show you the difference. If I flip this over and now assemble the ring, you can see from a top view that the ring, the, the bushing is uh, coincident with the ring. Um, I don't want that to be the case. So now I'm going to assemble it correctly, flip this over, push this in. And now if I go around the rim and put some force on the ring, now you can see there's a big shoulder here in between top surface of the bushing and the ring. Moving on to this, uh, what, we're, what we call the quick release chassis, the rail, two rail pins on either side and a rail spring. I'm going to show you how to take the rail spring out, take the pins out and remove the, the rail from this part. Um, what I want to do is take a pick and get it, a, get it inside um, one side of this ring. I'm going to do it using the loop here, pull it a little bit and then take it off. So here's this little spring. It's uh, quite a strong spring. So you're going to have to hold this tightly um, and be careful when you're using the sharp pick. Now that I do that, <clears throat> I've loosened this whole rail, should still be able to move back and forth. And then there are two pins on either side. So I'm going to again use this pick to push these pins out um, to the point where I can grab them with my fingers and pull them out. <clears throat> so at that point, this rail is just completely loose. So if you have to replace any one of these components, um, now you know how to take them all apart. <clears throat> now I'm going to show you how to put them back together. Um, it's the reverse of what I did, but you want to be a little bit careful with the um, spring assembly step. First step is to just orient the rail appropriately. Then from the side, um, you can put these uh, rail pins in. You shouldn't have much trouble getting the head of the pin past this QR chassis. Repeat on this other side here. and requires a bit of dexterity. So now I've got this second pin in, I can slide it past. I want to make sure the pin heads are close into the sides of the rail. Now the final step is to assemble the spring. What I want to do is assemble the spring, the far side, and then pull it over. We have a production fixture for this. And to do this manually is definitely tricky. So I'm going to try it a couple different ways here. So I'm just pulling the very end of the spring loop over a, a little hook. <clears throat> and there I should be good to go. I want to make sure it's centered. And then I can test once I have it assembled that I'm in fact getting um, a good snap back. Uh, this is the quick release. You can see it from the top now working. <clears throat> so that's that subassembly. Um, now I'm going to move on to this last one. Uh, this subassembly is includes a ball um, with what we call a shorty column, as well as uh, the ball head chassis. That's this die cast component. And then there's a plastic bushing on the inside. So there are three parts. What I want to do to remove the ball from the chassis, I actually have to snap some snaps, some plastic snaps over the chassis. So what I'm going to do is show you exactly where those are. Um, I'm going to take the point of the pick and put it right against this little snap and then push it. So you can hear a click and you can feel at the moment where you've snapped that little uh, snap over the um, side of the chassis. So I'm going to do that in three different locations. Um, Again, I know right where to push, so it's easy for me, but it's right in the center of these three small holes. Right in the center, I'm pushing in and pushing down as well. And when I do that, I'm able to um, defeat the uh, plastic snap. Once I've done that, it still doesn't fall out, but at this point I can just push 
and then I can slide the entire thing out this way. Now I have this bushing which I can take off, replace, etc. Um, and these are the three components laid out. It's a little bit of a puzzle, so to put it back together, um, I have to take the ball, put it inside the bushing this way, then take this subassembly and put it inside the chassis this way. Um, one note is it doesn't matter how you turn this as long as you have one of the, flan the bushing flanges align with one of the chassis flanges. So I'm going to do this this way. Um, then I'm going to make sure that these parts are aligned from the bottom. And I'm just going to press with my fingers on the top of this uh, plastic bushing. So here we go. Um, you may or may not hear a snap, and so I may need to um, assist the plastic bushing in, in kind of getting over these ledges. So I'm going to turn the part over, and then again with this pick, I'm going to apply a small amount of force on the very edges in the center of the three flanges. So the very edge on the outside edge, a little bit of force. Um, same thing with this one. And at that point, I should be sure um, that the bushing is sort of set and uh, has, has actually made it beyond those little snaps. So at this point, I shouldn't be able to push the ball out this way. It should be totally um, secure. And then I can use this as a subassembly um, when I'm rebuilding the ball head. Another note is that um, at the end of this process, you can see my fingers are a little bit greasy. So I don't want to get grease, if I can, anywhere on the ball. So that will affect the holding torque. So I suggest at this step, um, you take some alcohol on a rag and actually wipe down the ball and make sure that there's no residue, grease residue, on the, between the ball and the bushing. So I want to start in reverse and basically reassemble the whole thing. So the first thing I want to do is take the cinch detent spring, put it in this bore. It's the bore on the very outside, um, not one of the six screw holes. Then I'm going to take the, um, the thin section of the cinch detent pin. I'm going to balance it inside the spring like that. Next, I'm going to take the cinch ring, and I'm going to orient the thumb button of the cinch ring um, to this side near the rail. And this is um, one of the trickier parts in the assembly because I want to make sure that I begin to compress the spring without uh, angling it left or right. So I like to do this with two hands and carefully push this down. I can confirm that it's working. When I twist it left to right, I can feel this detent working um, and riding inside the track, not binding up. You can see I'm now clamping with my fingers <clears throat> the ring. And then I'm going to add this, this component, which is the um, cinch chassis. That has two flanges here and here. It's going to be upside down. Those are going to go on either side of the rail. And I'm going to slide it in. It should uh, lock into place. And you should be able to see um, you should be able to see concentric circles here where the screws will, will be able to align. Um, next, with one hand, I'm going to assemble this um, ball head clamp gear. I'm hoping that um, this would be a sub-assembly already put together. So in, in order to do this step um, for you, I would suggest to, to do this step prior um, rather than doing it um, at the same time as I'm doing now. So the first thing is to put that wave spring in there. The second thing is to get a stack of parts in the right order. That's a washer on top of the plastic bushing, then the thrust bearing, and then the second washer, also on top of that plastic bushing, or sorry, on top of the thrust bearing in this case. So now you can see this stack. Plastic, washer, thrust bearing, second washer. That's all going to go upside down into this ball head clamp gear. So at the end, it should look like that. And if you push on it with your thumb, you should be able to move it back and forth. If it doesn't move back and forth by a couple millimeters, then you've done something wrong, and it's catching, and you need to repeat this. Now I'm going to take this component, the ball head clamp gear, and put it inside the ball head. When I do that, I'm going to actually twist it to the left counterclockwise instead of clockwise. Um, so here we go. I'm twisting it to the left. Counterclockwise is actually screwing it in. It's a reverse thread. <clears throat> now you'll notice I'm still pinning, still holding down the cinch chassis um, because that's compressing that original cinch detent spring that's right here. If I let go of my fingers, <clears throat> everything will pop out. I'm going to continue by assembling these gears um, one by one. 
they are 120 degrees apart and they're the small holes um, 120 degrees apart and again I'm using this as a reference point um, this square cutout as a reference point to be basically fu uh, fully up and down here are the second two gears with the pins inside um, I'm making sure that this ball head clamp gear is turned all the way to the left until it hits this hard stop. If, if, if it's extended like this, I might not be able to assemble it because I'm basically cl over clamping it on the original assembly. So I want to twist this all the way to the left. Um, these gears can be upside down and they can be switched um, in any orientation. So uh, you, you shouldn't be able to assemble these incorrectly if you have them in the right um, XY position, the correct holes. Um, next, I'm going to assemble this ring. The ring, again, has a small plastic bushing on the inside of it. And I want the plastic bushing to be facing up. Um, if I assemble the ring this way rather than this way, I will create problems. So in this case, this step has to be done correctly. You should be able to see a plastic ring um, inside the metal ring. And you want to assemble it in the way I'm doing now. So in order to do what I just did, you might have to wiggle that ring back and forth in order to get all the gears to align. And again, I'm still applying force to clamp everything together to make sure that it doesn't pop out and expose that cinch detent spring. Um, the final step here is to take this subassembly and put it in, and everything will sort of clamp down. I'll, again, I will have to hold everything together um, while I assemble these screws. In our uh, production fixture, we have a tool to actually hold everything together. So you're going to have to do this um, yourself. <clears throat> I'm going to look for geometry to make sure that I'm aligning it correctly. That geometry in this view um, is this little mark up here. So you can tell that this cutout is different than these two cutouts. These two cutouts have pins, one pin here, one pin there. And those pins plug into these tiny keying holes, one hole here and one slot there. So what I want to do is find this feature or these two pins and make sure that I'm not assembling it like this or like this, but rather like this. So I'm going to take this and do a 180 and then push down. Again, aligning these two pins to these two features, a hole and a slot. So here we go. Um, I'm going to do that. And now, again, I'm kind of holding the whole thing together with my hand. Now I'm going to put these three big screws on. First screw, second screw, third screw. Um, again, I'm going to cheat with a, a production device here and uh, just quickly tighten these screws. And at this point, I have three screws in. And what I'm going to want to do is check to make sure that I have a working ball head and that I haven't um, pinched anything um, and make sure that everything works. So one quick way to do that is to move this ring back and forth. I should be able to hear and feel the um, small detents of that um, brass pin. I should be able to move this fully back up and down, move this back and forth all the way. And I should also be able to tighten the ring and feel um, the torque increasing on this joint. So all of those things should be true. If any of those aren't true, if this is difficult to turn, this is difficult to turn, or this doesn't move all the way, um, then I know I've done it incorrectly and I should repeat the process. Um, now, the final thing to do is just assemble these three screws, which I'll do now. One, two, three. <clears throat> Again, I'm going to cheat and use this tool to make things a little faster. Um, so there you have it. That's how to put back together the um, travel tripod ball head. Now I want to put the ball head back on my uh, travel tripod. So I'm just going to show that step again. Um, I want to make sure to extend the center column so that I have good visibility on this joint and then um, lock the center column knob. Make sure this isn't going to travel up and down. Um, I'm going to loosen the ball head and expose the screw at the top. I can put this in any orientation. Um, it should uh, seat nicely in there. And then I'm going to reach in, find that four millimeter screw and just tighten it. Once I tighten it all the way, um, it, you, should, uh, you shouldn't see any movement between these two parts. Um, and at that point, you should be good to go. That's it.